All right, thanks for watching. And today is a really fun video as usual because I saw this tweet like a month, like a week ago or something that says, oh, lasagnas are very special because if you have one lasagna like this and you add another one, then you still get another lasagna, right? Because if you put a long lasagna on top of the other one, you get another one. And uh, so I was, th then that person was like, oh, so one plus one is one. So all math is wrong. And then for a long time I was thinking, I was like, well, that would be a contradiction if this was plus. But then I realized, wait a moment, it's not regular addition, it's lasagna addition. And so today, the nerd that I am, I will define lasagna addition and study its algebraic properties. So, how do you define lasagna addition? Which I just call A, like O plus B. And let's just do it first of all for the two, like a case of no lasagna and one lasagna. So suppose we're like college students, we can only bake one of them. Um, then how would lasagna addition be defined? Well, if you add, if you start with no lasagna and you add it to no lasagna, you get no lasagna. If you have no lasagna and you put it on one lasagna, see like nothing here, and you put it on top, well, you still have one lasagna. Okay, if you have one lasagna and you put it on top, then you have no, uh, still one lasagna. And lastly, based on, what, on that tweet, if you have one lasagna and put it on top of another one, you have one lasagna. So, in this case, lasagna addition is this operation on the set 0, 1 with the following properties that if you add 0 plus 0, you get 0, 0 plus 1, you get 1, 1 plus 0, that is 1, and 1 plus 1, that is 1. And the question is, what are its properties? And actually, it leads to a very interesting algebraic structure. First of all, it's what's called closed. If you start with 0 or 1 lasagna, and you add it to 0 or 1 lasagna, you still get 0 or 1 lasagnas. So it's closed. If A and B are in your set, then A, O plus B is in your set. Then, what we also have is something called commutativity. So, no, actually, it's not necessary to have it commutative. Sorry, we have associativity, which means, um, which means the following, so, which means that order doesn't matter. In other words, parentheses don't matter in the following sense. If you add A lasagnas to B and then add it to C, then it's the same thing as adding A lasagnas to B plus C. So it doesn't matter if you first start with a stack of C lasagnas and then add the stack A plus B or First form the stack B plus C, and then add uh, A lasagnas. So suppose here you have the stack C, and then you have the stack B, and then you have the stack A. What this says is to form like the final pile, you first, you could first either stack A and B, and then stack it on C, or you could first stack B and C to get this pile, and then stack A on it. Might seem obvious to you, but actually I thought of a little proof, because notice, the only way to get zero lasagnas is to start with zero lasagnas. So in other words, the only way this expression could be zero is if actually all A, B, and C are zero. But then this is zero. So at least if this is zero, then this is zero. Well, if this is one, then one of them has to be non-zero. Therefore, because A, B, or C is non-zero, this whole thing is non-zero, therefore one. So you do have associativity, and then you have the identity element. Namely, there's some element called a zero lasagna 
that if you add zero lasagnas to A, you get zero plus A lasagnas, and which gives you A. In fact, what's interesting, the zero element is actually the number zero here. Because if you add zero lasagnas to a stack of A, and z <laughs> the same thing as adding A lasagnas to a stack of zeros gives you A lasagnas. And the reason I write those three things down is because you have this interesting property that uh, you have this set that is with the operation plus that's closed, associative, and has the identity, and that's what's called a monoid. So in fact, lasagna addition in this case, it forms a monoid, and uh, it's very interesting case of a monoid because it's one that's not a group. So what would group mean? It means for every A, you can have some element minus A such that A plus minus A gives you zero. But then it turns out this for, in groups this uh, element minus A exists, or A inverse, maybe I should write like that, not abelian necessarily, okay. And uh, uh, it's called, um, what's it called, and then, uh, well, it turns out, so for, let's say, non-zero numbers on, the, like, or maybe numbers under addition, well, the uh, inverse is just minus x. This inverse of x is minus x. For real numbers on the multiplication, like non-zero real numbers on the multiplication, the inverse of x is 1 over x. But it turns out for lasagna addition, there is no inverse. Because think, what would the inverse of 1 be? What can you add to 1 to get 0 lasagnas? Well, that's not possible. If you add anything to 1 lasagna, in this case, you would get 1 lasagna and not 0 lasagna. And 0 is for sure the identity element here. So that doesn't work. Therefore, it's what's called a monoid that's not a group. And not only that, that said, we do have another interesting property. It's what's called abelian. So A plus B is B plus A. So indeed, again, basically the order really doesn't matter in the sense that A plus B equals B plus A. And that's uh, so matrix multiplication wouldn't hold that, for instance. Uh, and then one more thing I want to talk about is, well, once you have this structure of lasagnas, you could have functions of lasagnas, and that leads me to this uh, thing called homomorphism. So here, a homomorphism phi from lasagnas to lasagnas is any function with this property, phi of lasagna a plus b equals phi of a, plus lasagna plus phi of b. And then one thing you need to know about homomorphisms is that I believe phi of 0, at least in this case, must be 0, because phi of 0 plus 0, that's phi of 0 plus phi of 0. And then, well, that's phi of 0. Well, I guess not necessarily, because there's no identity element. I mean, uh, well, uh, let's see. At least in this case, could uh, well, you very important. You can usually cancel stuff out because there's no inverse element. But in this case, at least for the case of zero and one, phi of zero must be zero because if phi of one is one, you get one. Actually, no, phi of one could be one. Hmm. Uh, yeah, never mind. So. Uh, the, the phi of zero can be anything, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, anything can be a lasagna uh, homomorphism. But let me um, cut that part out. So again, what is a lasagna homomorphism? It's one that, uh, it's any function that preserves this structure. So here's some interesting kind of functions. Well, you could have uh, what I like to call the eating function. Phi of 0 equals 0, and then phi of 1 
equals one. Let me just think. Uh, Anyway, uh, so <laughs> lastly, in math, so uh, in math we're never satisfied, right? We have this set with this operation. Now we want to figure out interesting stuff we can do with this set. And for instance, we can define functions from lasagnas to lasagna. So we can define, let's say, phi from 0, 1 to 0, 1. And let me give you, basically here there's just, I think, four types of functions. So let me tell you what those are. First of all, you can define phi of 0 equals 0 and phi of 1 equals 0. And I call that the eating function. Because what it does, if there's no lasagna, well then there's, you eat it and there's still no lasagna. If there's one lasagna, then uh, there's, uh, uh, you eat it, and then there's no lasagnas anymore. And then there is one, uh, let me see, uh, phi of zero equals zero, phi of one equals one. Uh, that's kind of the dieting function, function, because if there's no lasagna, you're happy, you don't eat it. If there's one lasagna, you don't eat it either. So there's still one lasagna, so that's what's called sometimes a zero function. This is the identity. And then we have phi of zero equals one. And then phi of one equals zero. That's kind of, uh, well, <laughs> if you eat the lasagna, you eat it and it disappears. Somehow if there's no lasagna, it appears. And I leave it up to you to figure out a scenario where this might happen. And lastly, uh, that's also interesting. If there's no lasagna, it suddenly appears. And if there's one lasagna, you don't touch it. So. Also, another scenario might happen. Uh, that might happen. And it turns out, so it's not always true, but let me just think about this one thing. Uh, it turns out three of them, except for the last one, I believe, Wait, no, uh, yeah, it turns out three of the four of them are very interesting because, wait, mm, mm, no, it turns out all of them are interesting because they do have this nice property where phi of lasagna addition it's lasagna addition of the results. I mean, if you can check it, so I think, the, yeah, the only case that might be a problem if those are like zero and this might be one, but then uh, I don't think that can happen. I might be wrong, but uh, yeah. at least eyeballing it, it looks correct. But anyway, and then let me just see. Uh, Uh, anyway, um, let's go. And that's what's called a homomorphism, or what I like to call it a lasagna morphism. So it's a function that preserves the structure of lasagnas, which here it's nice. Algebraists really care about them. And of course, then you might ask, what about more lasagnas? Well, the situation becomes tricky, but still similar. So let's do, this is A, this is B, and we will to define A, lasagna addition B. Well, in, in that case, what this should be interpreted as is adding a stack of A lasagnas to B lasagnas. So we have to also think what's going to happen. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Well, if you add no lasagnas to a stack of 0, you get 0. If you add no ones to a stack of 1, you get 1. If you add no lasagnas to a stack of two, you get two. And now, if you add one lasagna to a stack of zero, you get one. 
If you add one lasagna to a stack of one, you get one. If you add one lasagna to a stack of two lasagnas, what this means is you kind of split this into two, this one into two, or put maybe one here and none here. The point is what you end up with are just two lasagnas, which is very different from the scenario of adding two lasagnas to a stack of one. You see, you just pile it up and then you get one lasagna. Sorry, two plus zero is still two, and then two plus one, that is one lasagna, and adding two lasagnas to a stack of two. Well, no matter how you do it, you should get two lasagnas at the end. And this is another interest, I mean, it's still a monoid, so you can show that, well, it is closed, it has the identity element, and order, I believe, doesn't matter. Again, I might be wrong like, with that, but it is still true that A, lasagna addition B, lasagna addition C, equals A, lasagna addition B, lasagna C. Because I believe the only way, for instance, you could get zero here, if, if it's the, basically the only way you do not get the last stack is unless this one might be zero, but basically you can check if in all the cases that you do get this. But what's interesting, uh, compared to the previous example, before we had A lasagna B, equals B lasagna A, where here it turns out the order matters. Here, adding A lasagnas to B lasagnas isn't the same as adding B lasagnas to A lasagnas. Because, for instance, adding one lasagna to a stack of two gives you two, but adding two lasagnas to a stack of one gives you one lasagna. So that's what's called a non-abelian uh, monoid, but again, I don't even know if you can, oh, you can still talk about a billion things. And then, I haven't studied that, but it might be interesting to study all the uh, lasagna morphisms of this set, so there might be maybe more interesting ones than the previous example. I don't know. Uh, then you figure out, and I guess it's time for dinner, so let me have, I'm guessing what I'll have kale salad. No, maybe, maybe lasagna. Uh, anyway, I hope you like this little nerdiness from this tweet. Uh, if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.